as a investor who loves backing brands we sometimes will be a part of journeys not as long as we want to be and that is actually if we do that that's actually a bitter sweet success for me that that's reached a stage where i have to exit or i have seen exits but now their journey is going to continue and just be a household name so your question was damn good and it's definitely made us sweat a lot but uh, it's not a standard answer does one answer cut it otherwise i have to more to answer <laughs> sit i mean thank you yeah, sanil uh if if it's okay uh, for vivek and so let's see if you have any other question otherwise we'll just invest two more minutes on this are there any other questions But I think, uh, so there are no more questions. So I think <laughs> guy can continue. Yeah. Have you tipped off everybody to not ask questions so that you can ask yours? Okay. <laughs> so I think then we are done. Uh, thank. You. Do you have a question? Nothing. Sorry. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, all of you, for for making this, uh, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's hear it, and I'd request our eminent panel to please stay with us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bajaj, for bringing the best out of this panel as well. I think it was a very, very important panel. Many compelling insights in this panel, uh, building successful D2C brands. I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Pratik, Mr. Pratik Kumar Bansal, who's the director of business strategy at Adders Labs, to kindly join us on stage and uh, thank. our eminent panelists help us thank our eminent panelists with mementos can we please uh, bring the tokens on stage we can begin with mr sanil sachar partner huddle ventures let's have a round of applause everybody come on let's wake up yeah, mr vivek singla managing partner and cio private equity incred capital thank you for the applause ladies and gents Mr Aditya Arora Chief Executive Officer Far Network Private Limited and Mr Siddhan Keshwani Founder and CEO Libas Yes thank you for that applause and finally to our moderator Mr Deep Bajaj Founder Sirona Thank you so much Mr Pratik Kumar Bansal for doing the honors I request you sir to stay with us on stage for a photo opportunity with our panelists may I invite you to please give us that photo opportunity Thank you back as opposed to a founder that says let's go out go after a very large top of the funnel The reason I I emphasize on repeat is because it is through repeat that you get to know what your next set of products will be it is through repeat that you get to know how you can reduce your cost of acquisition and it is through repeat you can cement your your brand being the thought leader or the potential thought leaders in the space the second is obsession over what they're solving for i think um, you know i repeat this and you know i got great founders like like said over here who've just obsessed over the problem statement obsessed over quality obsessed over what they want to build building a legacy of a of a brand i think any brand owner uh, out here is building beyond themselves so is that, do you have that innate uh, obsession and then the third fundamental point for us really is at huddle we've always um, we've refrained from seeing is there a tailwind now that's a very anti venture capital thought process uh when we backed companies across some of the segments i mentioned there weren't there weren't playbooks but what we often look at is why can this playbook be built through the founder and through us so we really evaluate ourselves as well and i'll i'll sort of pause here because uh i would love to hear you know vivek said you and aditya vivek sir yeah hi uh good afternoon everyone thank you guys for having me over uh i am vivek i run the private equity fund at incred capital uh we are a aif2 category fund uh, domestic capital uh and uh, i have been doing private market deals for almost now uh, 20 years have had the privilege of being with uh, some really a star founders uh brands like lenskart delivery 
uh, Lishes, Express Bs, uh, you know, and many, many others, right? Um, I guess uh, really, you know, uh, the, the question is very simple, but the answer is quite complicated, right? <laughs> There is no one single thing that we look for when we invest into a company. I mean, there honestly has our things, right? Many, many things. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess everything else being equal uh, or leaving everything else aside, right? It's ultimately the guy who's running the business that we take the biggest bet on. Now there is if you ask me, there is really no science to it. If it were, things were very simple, but it's not that easy. So, um, just before coming into this room, I was actually on a phone call, and uh, you know, we are about to sign on a deal. Now, this is a company which has been running for uh, 40 years. They are doing turnover of almost 1,200 crores, a bit of 100 crores. Everything that you could, you know, typically think that, okay, the basics are in place, right? Third generation running the, fam uh, the, running the company. Uh, but in my 20 years of experience, you know, I've realized that there comes a point of time where you can do every check possibly, right? But you will never be able to do 100%. You'll get, oh, it, you know, I'm not sure how many of you are science students, but there's a, life, there's a principle called Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that beyond a certain level, science will just fail, right? So, you can do 60% diligence, 70% diligence, but the remaining 30% is where the devil lies. And you really cannot overpower that. So, ultimately, what I told my team before stepping into the room, did you find conviction in his voice? Did you see conviction in his eyes? Everything else, we will not be able to know beyond 12 months. He himself will not know. Uh, if I were to ask any of you, go back just 15 months of your life, tell me Instamart or Zepto or Blinkit will take your life away. None of you could have even, you know, vouched for that, right? But today, quick commerce is killing literally every form of commerce. I mean, not killing, but changing in a way, right? But things happen. And this is not the last time disruption has happened. Then it will happen. So the point is, founders will know but they will, they will have a vision for 10 years, but the visibility will not be more than 10 months or 12 months. So we as an investors, we borrow that vision, but unfortunately, we borrow that visibility also. So what do you do? You take a punt on that guy. Boss, yeah, you ki nahi karoge. <laughs> Ultimately, it's that only. I can give you a, a many other things that we look for. Obviously, the gross margins, the TAM, those checks will do. But ultimately, it will boil down to this single factor, at least as far as I am concerned. And uh, uh, I guess we come in at a stage where, uh, you know, the likes of a Huddle have done their hard work. They have paid their dues, uh, you know, did all the hard work, uh, bringing the companies up to a certain level where people like me can come in and give them that extra leg. So my job is much easier than his, uh, you know, but still we all struggle. Uh, and, and the point is that at, at the time that I come in, most of the time companies are generally profitable, have reached a certain size and scale. So things will generally be okay in terms of business traction. Uh, it's the guy that we really, really take the bet on. I don't no, know whether I answered it. No, I think you've said it. You've said it very, very well. You've taken a lot of moving parts away from from the actual decision making. That eventually it only comes down to the founder and the conviction that you're able to see all moving parts being the same. No, thank you. Aditya. Well, thanks again for having me here. Always a pleasure to catch up with friends old and new. Um, I think yeah, I'm the same guy who works equally hard with Sunil to make sure Vivek's job is easier. <laughs> but uh, technically, I think, yes, uh, uh, I run a fund called Far Capital. We are a $40 million cyber registered category one fund investing in again early stage startups from different sectors. So consumer is, of course, one of the core sectors. But apart from that, EV and other areas also we have uh, significantly touched. Um, yeah, made almost, in fact, last few, we few weeks back, make, made uh, my 100th investment. Uh, so we have passed the 100, now on to the double 100, on to the second innings. And uh, he's all of 27, by the way, huh? 
thank you thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much deep um so i think uh, i'll add another point another flavor to it which just goes on to prove the point that there are a lot of things i think uh, we look at while evaluating the founder but technically i think two things that we majorly look at uh, what we internally call as pe right not price to equity but problem and ethos right uh, going to the first fundamental thing i think is solving the problem right that is what entrepreneurs are made for for solving a genuine problem so no matter whatever the sector the core problem needs to be solved right eventually in the long run and if you are able to do it su successfully i believe you are a great founder and you will continue to of course do well for yourself and for the investor uh, so that is the first boring and basic thing that we look at start from the problem i think second thing that we look at in these days which uh, where uh, kind of consolidation is happening in pretty much every space so from a consumer perspective we look at what are the fundamentals uh, of of this whole uh, category creation journey is it a plus one or is it a plus infinity not together which goes on to support with multiple other products brands categories verticals so then we look at how you are approaching brand building right because eventually in, in fact me the pen sun and were having this conversation before also that we live in such a time where content is driving commerce uh, and they are not to in interdependent fields in fact content is pretty much driving everywhere and even in in the capital industry last 3 4 years i've take sit back and of course focus on brand building through content also and what i've realized is how you approach your uh, uh, your your brand in terms of what is identifying what is your target market and how would you eventually reach them and continue to serve them right content through newsletters or through through different social media channels through podcast right through through a lot of new other verticals i think we also look at that that whether this founder is a great marketer also right because if they are not able to do that then they might be solving the problem but the the time might not increase with time so that's what we look at thank you sir so the answer you run a great brand what would you say uh, takes to create a, a fantastic brand like libas and and some more words of wisdom for guys who want to start a startup or who are in, in their early stage what are the the key takeaways that you think we should absolutely focus on in early stage see i think i'll just share my journey because i think that's all i know about how to build a brand because i've tried to use every possible science that i knew of to build this but honestly actually i'll start from the beginning like i had one failed startup early and then that's when i realized that how to start a business because this starting a business and starting a brand are completely two opposite things right because when i started my first startup i wanted to build a brand that's the idea that i started the first company with that you know i want to build a brand without realizing that before you build a brand building a brand is a process right it's not a one year five year 10 year not even a 50 year it's a 100 year process that you kind of have to continue to put efforts towards but the first the the first part is the most important because you have to realize that before you build a brand you have to be a seller first you need to understand you have to think from a point of view of a sales person that what i'm going to sell how comfortably i will be able to sell it uh, which market should i go and you know uh, sell that product in and what are the gaps in the market that i need to fill where there will be immediate demand right so those are the things that i learned after my first fail startup that i straight on went on to trying to build a brand because when you try to do that you all your efforts go in talking about the brand building the brand and you actually tend to lose track of what is the product do people even need it is there a gap in the market or not so so that's what i did so when i started libas the idea was uh, of course i'll build a brand eventually but i need first proof of concept so no matter what you are selling or whatever you want what whatever category you want to build a brand in you should know what the market is what the market size is what are the gaps in the market and most importantly where do you market your product so that's how i started once i cracked that and i realized within a few months that you know product is doing well people are buying it and uh, i've cracked the right market because uh, i was in e-commerce first brand right and and we thrive only on repeats so, and i realized that i have a product which people are buying regularly almost on a monthly or a alternate month basis right so that was a good sign so that's how the journey started and uh, and then since then uh, brand obsession started right and and building a brand is not easy because you're actually 
uh, it's an evolution where you know you're actually building a brand amongst two different consumers one who's actually bought from you and you want him to come again to you and the other set of consumer which is even more difficult who has never heard of you and probably you want him to come for the first time right so we we scaled these two things separately and we said that we need strategies for this separately because today as important as it is to get a new consumer it is even more important to make sure that your existing con consumer keeps coming back to you so how they look at a brand is very important right and they don't look at it in the same way because we've taken so many customer feedbacks a person who's never heard of the brands takes marketing of a particular brand very differently from somebody who's actually experienced our product our brand our store our online system so we created that's why we are very very strong on retention to kind of make sure and and and, and we actually focus more on building aspirations for our current consumer so that he should feel that because what happens normally in the case of fashion is that people want to keep upgrading. Today maybe they can, you know, they want a certain brand but they have certain sep higher aspiration for another and they want to move that ladder, right? And, and for us, it's very important that we make sure that uh, they feel that aspiration towards our brand and not look at other brands to do that. So, so that's how we, we've kind of uh, segregated these two strategies and effectively following these two particular strategies very differently. And, and has worked so far for us, yeah. Okay, you've, uh, what is your experience of the whole world that exists around fundraising? Like your, your experience of fundraising, your view on it, how important is, it is for anybody with an idea to just have funding on day zero or, or, or when is the right time to raise the money? See, this is the most common question that I hear almost on a weekly basis from new startups, new guys who are starting their new business or probably ones who have done it for two, three years. And you know, the answer is pretty standardized as per my thought process. I feel that uh, firstly, you need to understand that are you creating a category or you're actually entering into an existing category. My belief, firm belief is when you're actually entering into an existing category, you don't need money on day one. Because if you do that, then you will not be disciplined throughout your journey. You will not understand the hustle of working without money. That's why we've seen, right, since, since this whole funding winter that we call it has started, uh, people who started with money on day one, they never had the discipline. They did not know how, that, you know, that they, they did not know the idea that on a 500 rupee product you can actually make 150 or 100 rupees because they never did that, right? They never started with their discipline. But in an existing category, especially common categories like apparel, beauty, where you know there are hundreds of brands, your proof of concept has to be on day one. You cannot say that I will make money six months later. I would completely understand that for a new category because you have to educate the customer, you have to build a completely new market. But, but for categories that are existing, I think money, external fundraise, and that's how I did it. So I, I, we, we, uh, we were bootstrapped up till uh, 550 crores of revenue. So we've done that completely bootstrapped in nine years. I raised funds majorly when I realized that I need to go online to offline and I don't want to spend another 10 years accelerating. I wanted to accelerate the business basically. I opened five stores, realized that, you know, offline business is working for me. Now I need to another 200, but I don't want to do it slowly over the next 10 years. I want to do it in two years. And, and, and I think funding should be used to accelerate in categories like ours and uh, uh, not on day one. And for new categories, I, I feel that, you know, it's, it, it may or may not be the uh, right choice, but, but still at least when you know that you have to create a new category, you'll have to spend some money. So, so that's my thought process about uh, how funding should be. But then did you have money from your earlier startup uh, which you could use in this business because the question will be that you know, I'm planning to enter a category which is very cluttered. Now how do I get consumers to, uh, you know, to discover me? From where do I get uh, that money? So as a founder, what would be your advice to the guys who let's say are entering into a cluttered category, do not have their own money also uh, and how can they go about this experience? See, honestly, these days, uh, I mean, I started when startup was a very new word, right? Today, there are so many opportunities, there are so many grants, there are so many government opportunities, some, so many banks, so many, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, early stage debt capital or maybe, you know, savings. I feel that there are certain ways and you don't need a lot of money, right? Uh, I did not use the money from the first startup, I'd only I, what I used was the existing inventory from my first startup to kind of scale the second one because when I started Libaz it was purely from the idea of liquidating that and think if it's working or not. So, 
so i mean it was a fluke that it worked that uh, i mean i carried on but but i think there are a lot of other ways to raise money today and and for a cluttered category even if you say raise through these grants 20 30 10 40 lakhs i mean that should be enough to for you to make some products and go out even if you have to go out on the road and sell the product that's enough to kind of understand whether people are wanting your product or not so spoken like a true founder how many of us are running a startup or want to run a startup in the audience okay we still have a few hands so the question now to vc so my request to all of you guys is you know there is there's money on the table and there's a founder who's done it um, i'm in the process i run a female hygiene brand uh, so if there are any questions please keep them handy because the idea is not to give gyan which which might not be relevant for all of you in one go so please do keep your questions ready would be helpful so now to the found to the to the investor side of the table what are your strict uh, like red signs when you when you evaluate a pitch great tam great everything what are the few things which you which you will say yaar this is an absolute no go for me so if for the ones who are into the business th these are these are absolute no goes please avoid this at all costs i think just before that i'll i'll just double double click on what said was saying i i think a lot of founders need to recognize that um when we say capital raising they think equity first and equity is a very expensive um product if i may put it that way it's it's very expensive to raise because it comes with a lot of responsibilities it um also and i might be you know shooting us in the foot only by saying it but it's very important to i just realized that actually that i'm sitting <laughs> right next to me i'm actually eating up their business by saying that funny that we started by saying that when we started the job discussion and then you were talking threatening i didn't realize so sharing my journey yeah no but it's very important to be it, i i really appreciate what uh, sit said because you have to be very careful about when you raise um who you raise from um and simply speaking because capital raising by the end of it means that in the order of capital being earned now your liquidation is actually potentially the least and i think i, I always say this out loud because people need to recognize that and therefore now you're still the founder you're still the brand owner but now you're working collectively with with a very different capital structure in place so i completely uh, and 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 building brands also again to the point that sid mentioned even if you can help build 10 sales 20 sales something that gives you enough data to then go raise capital then do it capital has to accelerate your learnings uh, come with some learnings even if they're something that you don't want to do but coming to your your question i think it actually stems with this point i evaluate the reason of the capital like what what is the capital really going to do for the founders because we come in so early uh, because we backed founders when they were naming their startups backing them sometimes in their series a where their learning curve will change what is that capital really fundamentally going to do for you rather than being able to answer um, what i do so i don't believe in pitches to begin with actually i i love seeing a deck but i want to meet my you know potential founders in person i like seeing how they evaluating us because let's be clear there is enough and plenty of capital out there there today is huddle ventures sitting here and then there are many other funds like us uh, who are better than uh, than us in many areas and maybe we're better than them in others but there's enough and plenty of capital so i want to see why does that founder want our capital how are they because i want to see how protective they are to them and what i really evaluate i've been a brand owner myself our job is to ensure that every employee is making money so i want to see how are they you you in building your family that sure that family comes at a price so i evaluate that a lot and lastly uh, and this is a learning you know this is a life lesson please judge and and to what aditya said ethos is very important culture is very important principles are very important these are eight ten year journeys that we get into and hopefully more with the founders so how are they changing when they are pitching quote and quote how are they changing when pen to paper is taking place please gauge and to exactly what you were saying vivek it's so important to see the you know is there conviction is there clarity and is there consistency so i gauge these things and then the deck by the end of it is you know merely words by the end of it what cheeses you off 
It's very hard to do that. I, I, okay, I think I, I, I cheese people off easier <laughs> than that. Okay. No, but I, I, I think, um, I think what, what gets me, um, what, what, what really, uh, I think impatience is, is uh, the enemy for any founder, any fund. Uh, so if they're impatient, then there has to be something for it. You know, that, that's not the smell of aroma. Something is burning. Okay. Vivek, what do you think? Um, well, we, uh, you know, evaluate uh, the red flags, right? Which, uh, so we have a four uh, sort of parameter. Uh, it's a very soft elements. Uh, and we call it IQ, EQ, RQ, and HQ. Wow. Uh, I, don't <laughs> I, I don't know how many of you will actually get the sense of it, but I'll still go anyway. Uh, so IQ, we don't mean intelligence. I believe, honestly, all of us are equally intelligent. It's just about initiative and gumption, which separates the best from the rest. Uh, so integrity is what I mean by I. Uh, whenever we do a deal, because I don't come at the stage which, you know, hard work is being done by both of them. So by the time I come in, there are already like three, four stellar investors inside. And uh, my job makes uh, me sort of reach out to uh, or any founder that I have backed so far, right? I will either know the founder or the leadership team or any board member or somebody who's really up and close with the company, right, in some form and fashion, what view hai. Wo, uh, You can read all decks, DD reports, wo sab theek hai, but you know, ultimately what the market perceives that person to be, you know, on an aggregate basis, what are the feedback from the community? So integrity is number one. If there is even the slightest bit of question on that, we just pull out. Just no, no questions. Second is EQ, standard emotional, but we measure it by how many people have been entrenched with the founder for the last X years. If there are 15 leadership team members and you have lost already five of them in the last three years, Generally, thoda fee. Right. Generally, then comes RQ, which is our way of measuring restlessness. How much on the edge of the seat the guy is? How hungry is he or she? Right? How much money has he taken off the table when I'm coming in? By way of salaries, by way of dividends, by way of share sale. How much is he taking in this round? And one very th uh, you know very simple rule of thumb that I apply to a company, if this company is doing 100 CR of revenue, are you raising more than 100 CR? Anybody who comes up to me, I'm doing 20 crore revenue, I'm raising 20 crore, I say, yeah, boss, not in one go. Let's do it tranche-wise. Many companies will die because of indigestion, then lack of capital, as they say, right? So that's a standard way. Don't overfeed them, and then they start throwing up. And lastly is HQ, which is our definition of humility. How much does a guy know that what he does not know? Does he have an appreciation that you will not know everything? Are you willing to listen to us? We obviously also will not know everything, but we'll try and help you. But you have to be prepared to listen to me. If you don't respect me, my money, then generally not. Very well said. Quite a structure. Aditya sir. I think uh, Vivek has covered the structural element of it. <laughs> Uh, and Sunil has covered the behavioral element of it as well. And now I'm wondering, of course, what to cover more. But I think I'll start with this classical quote, right? That founders are looking for thousand green flags to impress an investor, but an investor is looking for one red flag to say no to the founder, right? So no matter how many red flags we may we might make off, there might be a couple of things which might be non-negotiable, right? Couple of things are still. I think negotiable where let's say a founder maybe did not know the answer entirely to let's say a question on exit or did not know the answer let's say entirety on a question of certain TAM calculation. Uh, that's still I think neg uh, uh, negotiable, right? So I just wanted to say that no founder is that way perfect. Every All of us are, 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 are of work in progress, right? So are the investors also. So you don't have, whenever you start uh, with, uh, you should be your true self while you're fundraising, right? Uh, uh, when we talk about humility question, right, as Vivek said, I think there is a certain humility question from the investor side also, right, where we believe in the journeys of founders and 
we have dedicated our lives in a way right and our capital to of course support your journeys and if you guys become successful then eventually we become successful so our successful uh, criteria is you guys becoming successful so i think that and second thing i want in fact i always say that uh, nowadays is because markets are getting competitive right uh, although capital is plenty available but so has the consumption of that capital also increased with time right and if you look at it's a 10 year it's a more than 10 year 20 year journey but there would be a lot of micro journeys in between right of one or two years which decide the fate of startup eventually right and when you go for fundraising a lot of founders what they do is they talk about plain vanilla terms in fundraising i have a deck i have a financials this is what i want to raise this is my valuation that's it right four simple steps and your your fundraising discussion is done but i specifically don't like such kind of discussions because here there is no rational or context to the investor why does this capital is even required there is no context into into what would be the runway after this capital till at what point of time you would start going in the market and raise another capital and would your the numbers that you will be hitting at that point of time when you are running almost out of capital would that match with the market valuation that is there and would the coinciding happen so that you get the right valuation and the right capital also and you don't end up over diluting so i i always tell that whenever you are raising capital if a founder does not have a back end plan pre Uh, uh, ready in terms of what is the allocation of that capital right what is the i'm not saying that make it to the finest core but there should be certain estimation that okay this is the capital where i'll spend this much money every month and these are the scenarios that i want to achieve right this is the top line that i want to hit so that by the time i go ahead and raise capital right maybe at nx valuation my revenue should be at that level so i that get get the right kind of multiple and i don't end up over diluting or don't end up doing a down round also right so always have that plan ready in fact discuss this with your investor so that in case there are any mistakes or white spaces in between that gets covered so yes you should prepare that beyond a pitch deck and a financials right because financials are just projections i specifically don't like projections a lot because all of it is just estimations right i write i, I like hard written numbers which have a hard written context behind it so always have that plan ready yeah awesome said so because you raised money and of course raising money is as good as getting married to the investor you know it's a relationship did you have uh, a wish list uh did you have a uh, anti thesis on the kind of investors you would not raise from or whoever came in uh, you said fair enough let me just get the money in no honestly it was never about the money so we've been a profitable business since day one right so i was not hungry for money i wanted uh, an investor who's uh, so basically i had two clear visions that first was uh, i want to kind of scale up my retail offline retail journey because that was new for us any insight on that front would be helpful right so we wanted to actually look at investors who've done that in the past uh, in the last 5 6 7 years that was one second is that uh, we uh, wish to do an ipo over the next 3 3 and a half years so we also wanted to do uh, or meet investors who've done that with brands successfully entered at the stage that we were at and uh, when i was very actually i made a list of three investors and and i was like i'm only going to talk to these three and i don't even want to go else if they reject me then i'll actually go out and in the market and see so i had a very like particular stringent wish list uh, and i the bankers that i was working with i told them i'll i'll do whatever but i'll make sure that you know i want to get it from these guys and thankfully it took time but i was able to convince them and show them the vision that i had around the brand and you know that was the idea so i mean it was it took time but it was not that difficult uh, because i think my vision was clear and and they understood it you know that because today the biggest challenge in a category like ours is it's so cluttered that most brands are not able to differentiate uh, from other brands right and if you're able to convince your investors that in a cluttered field you have a moat i mean i think that's the biggest selling point because they don't care about sales because fashion brand sales go like this like you know it's like a, a uphill downhill kind of a journey if one season collection is good you go up if one season collection is bad you go down right so so what inventory levels i have what sales are happening of course it's important but that's secondary first for anybody to be interested in a cluttered category like ours you have to show them that you know uh, 
this is what I'm doing differently, this is how I look at fashion differently and this is something that has not happened in the past. And I think I was comfortably able to convince them and hence, uh, I, I mean, I think they understood my vision. You know, great job. I think this question uh, has to be viewed differently per venture that we back. It can't be looked at as a, as a fund. Um, I can't look at the entire portfolio and I personally don't believe that you can put the pressure of one founder due to the pressures of the other founders not performing. So every company has to be viewed as though it is the only company in the fund. That's always been the methodology of us investing. Has our thought process of exit changed? No, I'd be lying if, it, if I had an answer of it being the same or it changing and I'll tell you why I'm being so candid with you. I think first and foremost, how early we like to come in, you have to let the company hit the course of when does momentum really begin. Now what does that mean? That means there is something that you know that def definitely doesn't work and then there's some things you know that definitely do work. After that, do we start really looking at what is the real TAM, what is the real momentum, what is the ceiling of this company. Um, there are certain ventures of ours that after our check don't necessarily need, need capital. Now I know that's not, that's very anti-VC, but I love those ventures because uh, I think those are businesses. There's a very different definition between a venture and a business. So I think it's important to um, not put the pressure on the founders early on about where the exit's going to come. It's very unfair. Uh, neither us or them have a magic eight ball. Um, in the early days, a, found, it, a founder will take 18 to 24 months sometimes to figure it out. And I think an investor's job is not to play the investor during that time, but to play the role of an enabler. Um, after a while though, I think we all have a fiduciary duty to return capital and more to our investors. And that's when we start looking at upstream investors who can take over the journey. And I'll tell you a last point, something that hurts me a lot as a, as a investor who loves backing brands. We sometimes will be a part of journeys not as long as we want to be. And that is actually, if we do that, that's actually a bittersweet success for me. That it's reached a stage where I have to exit or I have seen exits but now their journey is going to continue and just be a household name. So your question was damn good and it's definitely made us sweat a lot, but uh, it's not a standard answer. Does one answer cut it? Otherwise I have to, more to answer. <laughs> Sit. I mean, thank you, yeah, Sanil. If, if it's okay uh, for Vivek and So let's see if we have any other question, otherwise we'll just invest two more minutes on this. Are there any other questions? Yeah. But I think, uh, so there are no more questions, so I think <laughs> the guy can continue. <laughs> have you tipped off everybody to not ask questions so that you can ask yours? <laughs> so I think then we are done. Uh, th thank you. Do you have a question? Nothing, sorry. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, all of you, for, for making this. Uh, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.